This video is on advanced factoring. By advanced factoring, I mean not algebra 1 when you factored quadratics, not algebra 2 when you factored by grouping or you did uh, rational root theorem, synthetic division, and then factored. Uh, it's not factoring with a, something in front of your lean coefficient in a quadratic. I mean factoring with rational exponents and negative exponents or rational negative exponents, rational meaning fractional exponents. In this problem, both of these terms have an x, so I'm going to factor out an x. The way I know what power I should put on this x that I factored out is I look for the smallest power among the terms, between these two terms, among if there's more than two. Between 5 halves and 1 half, 1 half is smaller. 1 half is less than 5 halves, so I factor out x to the 1 half. When I factor out x to the 1 half, I'm going to subtract a half away from all the powers on the x on the inside. Factoring x to the 1 half out of x to the 1 half just makes 1. Factoring x to the 1 half out of x to the 5 halves means that from 5 halves, I'm going to take 1 half. Subtracting 1 half out of all the powers. So I'm going to take away 1 half and end up with 2. So I have x to the 2. Difference of squares means I also can write this, and I should write this as 1 minus x, 1 plus x, and depending on how you feel about rational exponents, maybe you also want to write this as square root of x, 1 minus x, 1 plus x. For the real sake of being really thorough, I actually prefer it take a negative out and write it like this. But that doesn't really matter. This next one, common to both terms is an x, and common to both terms is an x plus 3. So I'm going to take out an x and an x plus 3. The exponent on my x is going to come from the smallest power I see it in x. x to the negative one half and x to the one half. I'm going to take out x to the negative one half because negative one half is less than one half. I'm going to take out x to the negative one half. Same thing with the x plus threes. I see an x plus three to the negative one half. I see an x plus three to the one half. Negative one half is the smaller exponent on an x plus three. Here, x to the negative one half, I factored out. So that's just a, a one here. x plus three to the one half I factor out x plus 3 to the negative 1 half. So what I do is I take away negative 1 half from 1 half. From 1 half, I'm going to take away this negative 1 half. And I end up with 1. So I have x plus 3 to the 1. If I factor x to the negative one half out of x to the one half, I do one half minus negative one half plus two halves, which is one. x plus three to the negative one half, I, I factor that out, so it's just one. So now I'll just rewrite this line a little bit cleaner. And end up with x plus three plus x, which means I have. Two x plus three. Written with those as radicals, and because they're negative, I move them to the denominator. This could be written as two x plus three over square root of x square root of x plus three. I also could write that all as one radical. Whatever you think looks nicest, slash whatever your teacher thinks looks nicest. Uh, this one, I see there's an x in everything. And what's the smallest power? Negative one half. Negative one half is less than three halves, and negative one half is less than one half. So I'm going to take out negative one half. I subtract that negative a half from everything. 
three halves minus negative one half makes four halves. One half minus negative one half makes two halves. I took out the x to the negative one half, so that's gone, but I'm even going to still explain it the same way. Negative a half minus negative a half makes zero, so I have x to the zero. The thing about x squared plus 8x plus 15 is that that actually factors further. x plus 3, x plus 5, so I could write this as x plus 3, x plus 5 over the square root of x. Over because it's a negative exponent here, square root because it's over 2, so I do the second root. Oh, this one's a little bit different. This one has nothing to do with, there's no GCF here. There's no, it's not like there's an X and everything, so I'm going to take that out. This one is in a quadratic form. Recall from my class, if you're in my class, or from somewhere, if you're not. Quadratic form is when I see powers on the X, where it looks like a power, half the power, then a constant number. To do these, I do it by substitution. I do maybe like a equals, and I do the middle thing, x to the two-thirds. I do the half power one, x to the two-thirds. This lets me rewrite this as minus 2 doesn't change. I'm going to do minus 5. x to the two-thirds we said was a, so it's just minus 5a. 12, x to the 4 thirds, the same as x to the 2 thirds squared. So 12x to the 4 thirds is the same as 12x to the 2 thirds squared. This factors, if I want to guess the factoring, or I could do it by grouping. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. Numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 5 are negative 8 and 3. 12a squared minus 8a plus 3a minus 2. I then group it. Out of this first part, there's a GCF of 4a. At the second part, there's no GCF, or in other words, there's a GCF of 1. 1 is their greatest common factor. So this factors to 4a plus 1, 3a minus 2, which since the problem started off with x's, I can't really say all oh, the factors to this thing with a's. a is a thing I made up. The test paper wants x's. So I need to say 4, I translate back to x's by saying x. The two thirds plus one, three x to the two thirds minus two. 